not able to get on right away. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I am excited to share this class with y'all. Um, haven't done one like this in quite a while. And I thought it'd be fun um, just to share some ways to use the Vitality oils. So we're doing a cooking with oils class tonight. So uh, my name is Wendy Clayton and I have been using Young Living since 2013. So I do recommend that you pull out your pen and some paper so you can take notes and write down any questions that you have as we go through this presentation. I will keep everybody muted for most of the presentation until it's time to answer questions um, and we can have some discussion time at the end. And uh, for any of those of you that are already Young Living members, if you share any, um, uh, any, uh, I can't even talk today testimonies or uh, just making sure what you share is compliant in our chat box and then we can practice that and so I also have put a link in the chat box uh, to the contact me form so if you can take a minute to fill that out I do use this with all of my classes um, especially since we're meeting each other online and not able to kind of check in at uh, in person so this helps me keep track of who has shown up. And I also have um, file and a file, at least one file to send you at the end of class tonight. So I do have a file that has um, all the recipes in a nice printable format for you to use. And so I'd like to be able to send that to you at the end of the class. So if you fill out that form, I can make sure to send that to you. And for those of you that have been attending my classes or just getting started with classes, we do a series of core classes that are 101, 102, 103, and 104 classes. And I do keep track of that and provide certificates upon completion and a special gift for those um, who complete those. So that's my other reason for keeping track of attendance. So um, I do want to make sure I can send you the beautiful recipe file that goes with this information so you can just make sure you get that filled out before we're done tonight. Okay, so let's dive in. Our family has been using Young Living products since 2013, and I just want to share a few things about how we got started and a couple of our aha moments. First, I had already been looking at natural options to help our family's overall health as well as trying to deal with some health challenges that our family was facing, especially dealing with allergies and asthma related issues in several of our family members. I first learned about Young Living about five years before I became a member. I do not recommend waiting that long. I tried other products, made my own herbal concoctions, um, tinctures and lots of other things. After trying several other essential oil companies oils and doing over a year of specific research on Young Living itself, the company, the products, how they do things. I contacted my friend that I knew was involved in Young Living and told her that I wanted to sign up. I dove right in and I actually purchased um, the premium starter kit with the essential oils as well as the seed starter kit all at one time. I was so glad that I did and you'll see why as we go through this presentation. One key change for me was finding some oils that were really able to help me deal with my year round itchy eyes, stuffy nose, sneezing and breathing challenges. I had tried some other companies, lavenders in particular, and they just didn't do what their research said that they should do. When I received my starter kit and tried out the Young Living Lavender, I was so amazed. The smell was different and it didn't give me a headache. Most lavender products any, would give me a headache. Anytime I smelled something that was supposedly lavender scented, it made me feel ill actually much of the time. So I found out with the Young Living Lavender that it smelled like a fresh plant, not a fake flower scent. It was concentrated and just a small amount used daily began to make changes in my body's ability to deal with my year-round issues to such a degree that I was able to um, get off my allergy medications and begin supporting my immune system and wellness through the use of essential oils or Young Living products and other lifestyle changes that we were making at the time. It's been an ongoing process to find what works best to support my overall wellness and that of my family. We are always learning, but have made great strides in many areas already. Tonight, I'm gonna to share some other stories as we go through this presentation. So, so if, one of the exciting things that I've learned to do, and I'm, I'm still learning, <laughs> is how to use the Vitality oils in our recipes and in our cooking. We have some tried and true ways that we use it already, but I was excited to come across some of these recipes and share these with you tonight. So I wanna ask you, what memories do you have of cooking, baking, or enjoying good food? Are there any traditions related to food that you enjoy sharing with your family? 
I know that I had many growing up, especially related to the holiday time. We've tried to continue those with our family and now our adult children make a lot of those recipes instead of me. Um, I've always enjoyed cooking and baking. It's been exciting for me um, as I've started to become more aware of what goes into my body to learn new ways to incorporate oils into my favorite dishes. I'm amazed at the difference in flavor compared to the dried spices and seasonings. Ingesting oils can be a concern for some, but don't worry, this class will give you the knowledge to make an informed decision and the confidence to try new things. So let's get started. So first, feed to seal. Not all essential oils are created equally. When you shop with Young Living, you are getting quality products backed by a seed to seal guarantee that you won't find anywhere else. You can expect that Young Living will provide you with only the best. Plant material that is grown on corporately owned farms or carefully vetted partner farms that you can actually visit. It is so amazing to be able to visit the farms. It's so awesome. Sustainable farming and sourcing practices providing the purest oil, great care taken to preserve and protect natural resources, hand weeded fields and zero use of pesticides, oils that retain all their natural constituents and therapeutic property, use of food grade distillers with state of the art design and distillation methods, low pressure and low temperature distillation without the use of solvents or synthetic chemicals, rigorous testing on each batch by internal labs and third party facilities, oils that are carefully reviewed through every step of production in order to meet or exceed industry safety and purity standards beyond organic. And the best part, if the oils do not meet these high standards, they are rejected and it will not be bottled as a Young Living product. Now that is amazing. And I just have to say for, um, and I can share this later for those of you who may not have seen it, I just saw a quick video from the farm in Mona, Utah, where they are actually trying out using sheep in the clary sage fields to control the weeds. So the amazing thing is they've had them out there for a few weeks and he was just checking the plants and they are not touching the clary sage plants at all, but they are eating the weeds between the plants. And so that's kind of amazing. Um, and of course, I'm sure they're, you know, providing some fertilizer, natural fertilizer while out, out there. So they are always looking for new ways to be, um, more environmentally friendly and to also uh, make things more sustainable long term. So that's just some of the neat things they're trying out right now. Okay, so usage and safety. Essential oils can be used in three main ways, aromatically, topically, and internally. For the purpose of this class, we're gonna focus on internal usage. So remember the seed to seal stuff that we mentioned earlier? That's how you know you're getting safe, quality essential oils. Just remember, these oils are pure, unadulterated, and potent. For this reason, it's recommended to start slow, read the labels, and do your own research, and feel empowered to determine your comfort level with ingesting essential oils. Young Living makes it super easy and has an entire line of essential oils approved for ingestion called the Vitality Line. The oils have also been non-GMO project verified. Cooking with oils is not complicated, but we've got a few tips for you. You should store your oils in a cool, dry place. Um, many of the oils even do good in the refrigerator if you wanna store them in the refrigerator. You can put your cooking oils in a dedicated food grade dropper bottle to make measuring easier. Um, I would only do that with ones you're using quite frequently because we have found that some of those dropper bottles don't seal real well <laughs> with some of our other oils. Um, you can use stainless steel or glass uh, prep or mixing bowls. Oils and plastic do not mix, so make sure you're using stainless steel or glass. And then you wanna keep bottles seal sealed tightly to preserve their quality and shelf life, but not so tight that you crack the lid. Um, and <laughs> in fact, Heather was just talking to me about this the other day, posting about this, and I've had this happen in our family also. So the tendency is to make things like super tight to make sure they're closed all the way, but with oil bottles, it actually can do the opposite. And you can actually crack the lids, um, which then really lets the vapors and such escape from the oils. So just be careful with that. 
You can add oils to your dish at the end of the cooking process. So this will extend the life of your oils by requiring fewer drops to achieve the same desired flavor. Because the way the oils are made, they will um, vaporize quickly if they're hot. So it's better to add them towards the end when they're not, uh, your product you're making is not super hot. Or, um, and it doesn't take long since they're liquid, of course, to mix in and flavor what you're making very quickly. Okay, so this graphic here is kind of shows us cost and convenience and how kind of the conversion rate for how to use the uh, Vitality Essential Oils compared to dried herbs and spices. So do you buy fresh or dried herbs and spices from the grocery store to cook with? Are they organic? Have you ever done a breakdown of how much that is actually costing you per dish? One thing I hear so often is oils are too expensive. Hmm, I think not. Let's do some math. Since Amazon is a household name, I picked the product from there. Frontier Co-op Organic Rosemary Leaf Fancy Grade. I didn't know there was a fancy grade for rosemary, but let's go with that. You can get a 0.85 ounce bottle for $4.69. It contains approximately seven tablespoons of organic dried rosemary leaves, which ends up being 67 cents per tablespoon. According to our conversion chart, four drops of rosemary essential oil is equal to one tablespoon. An entire bottle of rosemary vitality, which is gonna be 90 to 100 drops, costs only 7.75, equaling just, equaling just eight cents per drop, a total of 32 cents for a tablespoon worth of rosemary. I'm no math whiz, but I think, point, I think 32 cents is less than 67 cents. That's more than a 50% savings, right? Maybe I'm a math whiz after all. Ha. So let's say you are making a dish and the recipe calls for one tablespoon of rosemary. You could run to the store or wait for it to be delivered from Amazon and pay for the dried stuff. Or you could grab fresh rosemary, probably pay even more, only use what you need and then end up throwing out the rest because it turned brown. The best and most affordable option have a well-stocked oil cabinet and you can grab your rosemary vitality instead, spending only 32 cents and give your dish a fresher, more robust flavor profile. And guess what? You can keep using that same bottle of oil for 25 more dishes and still get great flavor and freshness every time. That all adds up to a win in my book. Now I'll tell you a few things about these conversions. I will definitely recommend that you start slowly with a tiny bit at a time because some of these oils are so strong that even a full drop is too much to add to even a big pot of uh, like say spaghetti sauce. You're using oregano, rosemary, um, even one drop can be overpowering because it is strong and the flavor is a little bit different than what you get from a dried product. So a lot of people, if you want less than a drop, what you do is you take a toothpick and when you open the bottle in the middle, there's, it's actually the, the airflow hole. <laughs> you can stick the toothpick right down in the middle. So dip your toothpick in and then just swirl the toothpick in um, your liquid product that you're making. This works especially well when you're doing uh, like sauces and those kind of things. And that way you get, you'll see how much, you'll get a little bit of flavor at a time and you can control that a little bit, little bit better. Um, oh, you asked, how does one drop get all the way through the whole dish? You stir it. <laughs> so um, it, it just like when we put oils on our body, they go everywhere. So when you put something in a recipe, you just stir it just like you would if you're adding, you know, sugar or lemon juice or almond um, extract or vanilla extract. You just stir it in and it mixes in well with the whole recipe. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, so good to the last drop. Another savvy way to cook with oils and get the best bang for your buck is to infuse all the things. So you can infuse butter, salt, olive oil, water, pretty much anything your heart desires. So here's a few ideas. You can do flavored butter. You can add one drop of essential oil to one teaspoon of softened butter. Um, you could probably even do one drop to more than that, depending on which oil you're using. 
You can do flavored salt. You can grab your empty lemon, lime, basil, rosemary, or thyme essential oil bottles and fill them up with good quality Himalayan or Celtic sea salt. Let it sit for at least 24 hours and voila, oil infused salt for your dishes. So that is a great way to get the like very last bits of essential oil that is in those Vitality bottles. So just fill it up with some salt, let it sit. That salt will absorb the remaining um, oil that's in the bottle and then you can uh, use, then use that in your recipes or to shake on top of your food. Flavored sprays is another way that you can add these easily. So you can combine one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, 10 drops of your favorite desired Vitality essential oil, and filtered water in a two ounce food safe glass spray bottle. You can shake well before each use and spray it on food um, at the end of cooking. So this is a great way to add, this would be great to add flavor to your salads. Um, also really good for spraying on stuff like pasta, just to give a little bit of flavor at the end in a safe way. Um, and that's something you could easily play around with different flavors and different combinations. Flavor kitchen oils. So you can get to play around with this one. You can grab a two ounce food safe dropper bottle, preferably glass, Fill it with extra virgin olive oil or your favorite kitchen cooking oil. Leaving room, so leave some room at the top to add your essential oils. You'll start with just a few drops of your desired essential oil and add more until you've reached the prefer preferred level of flavor. So you can add a little bit at a time, test it out, see what it tastes like, what you think of it, and then go from there. Flavored water. Uh, citrus oils are a great option for flavoring your water. They're cold pressed from the rind, so they are not hard on your tooth enamel. Plus they are filled with antioxidants. So start with one drop in a glass of water. Remember, oils and plastic do not do well together and add more if desired. Try this delicious recipe for starters. So you'll see on the slide, this is one of the recipes. Um, remember, you are the chef here, so you can add whatever ingredients or oils your palate desires, use your imagination, and get creative. This kind of just gives you a guideline of where you can start, and then you can play around with the flavors. So this uh, is a combination of a half, a half a cup of olive oil, two cloves of garlic minced, one shallot minced, two to three drops each of lemon and lime vitality, three to four drops of tangerine vitality, one to two tablespoons of sweetener to taste. Uh, you can use raw honey or liquid stevia. If you use the stevia, use a way less than that. Um, salt and pepper to taste. And you could also uh, just kind of play around with that. And if you have black pepper um, vitality oil, you can actually use that in place of the pepper too. So this is a good kind of basic recipe that you can play around with. And then you can substitute out other oils to, to get different flavors. Okay, so we're gonna go through some recipes. Um, four seasons of flavor. One of the best things about cooking with oils is that they never go out of season. You could be in the dead of winter and still whip up a dish that tastes as fresh as spring. Let me show you some ways to do this. You can add black pepper vitality to your scrambled eggs. You can add orange or thieves vitality to melted chocolate and drizzle over sliced fruit. So yummy. Um, you can add peppermint vitality to brownies or hot chocolate. I do this all the time. You can add cinnamon bark or nutmeg vitality to your pancake batter. I love cinnamon bark in just about anything. I put it in my hot chocolate. I put it actually in my water with orange um, vitality. So, so good. It's actually very good for you. Add oregano and basil vitality to spaghetti sauce. You can add lemon vitality to marinade for chicken and fish. You can add dill vitality to your favorite potato salad. You can add cilantro vitality to your rice on Taco Tuesday. So those are just a few ideas of where you can do that. Basically, you can look at what the spices and seasonings that you normally use in a recipe, and then look for what vitality oils that you already have, or maybe make a list of the ones you want to get, so you can start changing these out in your recipes. Okay, so a taste of spring. Spring is nature's way of saying, let's party. That's a quote by Robin Williams. What do you think of when you think of spring? My mind goes to sunshine, fresh air, flowers blooming, new life, and lavender. 
so spring is always an awesome time to experience where we, well, we're going through spring right now, getting ready to start summer. So let's get the party started with some recipes that are perfect for celebrating spring. So here's an awesome one. So this is a nitro smoothie. So sunrise nitro smoothie. Ingredients are one tube of Ningxia nitro, four drops of orange or tangerine vitality. You can do a half a cup of coconut water, half a cup of strawberries, half a cup of blueberries, one peeled navel orange, a half a teaspoon of chia seeds, and a half a cup of cubed ice. The ice is optional depending on if you like um, it to be icy or not. So you can combine all your ingredients in a blender and blend until you get the desired consistency. You can add additional coconut water if needed. So depending on, because you're adding the fruit, one thing I like to do with my smoothies is I use frozen fruit, and so you already have it nice and it'll stay thick, um, but I usually still add some ice. I like my smoothies very thick. Other people like them more um, thinner, more liquidy, so you can adjust this to what you like the best. So yummy. Okay, so here is another recipe. Now on each of these slides, I don't have the recipe visible on all of them, partly because some of them are too big <laughs> to fit, but the file that I have, at the, uh, I can email it to you so that you'll have all of these recipes in an easy to print format to save for later and try them all out. So this one is lemon lavender vegan cheesecake, okay? So this is a recipe that's adapted from Fruitful Dish um, as a website. And let's see, so for the crust, you use one cup of mixed nuts. So you could use like a combination of walnuts, almonds, and cashews, a tablespoon of chia seeds, and one cup of dates. So that's what you would use for the crust in this version. And then for the filling, you would use two cups of raw cashews pre-soaked in water for four hours, a half a cup of lemon juice. You can use three, uh, like three small organic lemons and then add three to four drops of lemon vitality for added flavor. You can use a quarter, you'll use a quarter cup of pure maple syrup, a quarter cup of coconut oil that's been melted, and four to six drops of lavender vitality, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So the way that you do this is you would grease your muffin tin. So this is gonna make kind of like individual little cheesecakes, okay? So you're using a muffin tin to make these. You're gonna grease that muffin tin with nonstick spray or coconut oil. And you can place long strips of parchment paper in each muffin mold so it'll be easy to pull them out. You'll blend the dates, nuts, and chia seeds in a food processor until a rough, sticky, sticky texture is reached. You're gonna transfer that mixture into the muffin pan by spoonful and press it down firmly and evenly, okay? So you're gonna do that and fill up those 12 slots on your muffin pan. And then you're gonna put that in the freezer while you're working on the rest. You're gonna blend all of the filling ingredients until smooth and creamy. Add liquid if needed, so you can add some almond milk to that if needed, um, or you could just add some water if needed. Remove the muffin pan from the freezer, add the filling to each crust, smoothing, add, smoothing it out as you go to make sure you don't have bubbles. Decorate it if desired, so you can use um, lavender before freezing and lemons after freezing. So if you wanted to actually put some pieces of lavender, um, you can actually put pieces of lavender in the cheesecake mixture, um, or you can top them when it's done um, with lemons. So then you're gonna freeze it for at least five hours. Then you're gonna pull out each cake um, using the little parchment paper strip you put in it, and then it's ready to serve. So I will have to say I have never tried this type of vegan cheesecake before, but we may have to try this out and see how it works. Okay, seasonal wellness lavender lemonade. So this recipe, you're gonna take one and a quarter cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice, a half a cup of local honey, one drop of lavender vitality, two drops of lemon vitality, and six and a half cups of water um, divided. So you're gonna add lemon juice to the glass pitcher, including the lemon pulp. In a small saucepan, you're gonna combine honey, the honey in a half a cup of water over low heat, just until the honey has combined with the water to make a syrup. Then you can add one drop of lavender vitality and two drops of lemon vitality to the syrup. Then you're gonna pour the syrup into the lemon juice, add the six cups of water and stir well. And then you can serve that over ice. 
So one of the tricks to using essential oils when you're trying to mix it with liquids, especially um, in like this type of recipe where you're making a lavender lemonade, um, and also we do this when we make teas, if you mix it with the honey um, or whatever type of ingredient, the honey or oil in the recipe first, it actually will help it blend better into the rest of the recipe, especially if the recipe also has a lot of water in it. So it just helps it to blend and emulsify within the recipe um, instead of floating on top. So that's just a little trick. Okay, savoring summer. Summertime is always the best of what might be. That's a quote by Charles Bowden. Oh, sweet summer, sun, sunshine, outdoors, beaches and barbecues. What are your, some, some of your favorite things about summer? I know ours is getting a break from school and teaching, which now I'm about permanently done with, <laughs> at least teaching my family, um, not teaching all of y'all. <laughs> so for me, summer means um, giving my oven a break, definitely here because it gets so hot, firing up the grill, cold salads, frozen desserts, sitting around a campfire, roasting marshmallows and making s'mores, and memories with family and friends. These recipes are perfect for all your summer celebrations or if you just want to bring some warmth to the winter. So here is a recipe. This is a Mediterranean marinade. This is made by mixing three quarters a cup of olive oil, a half a cup of soy sauce or coconut aminos, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, a clove of garlic mint, one drop of oregano vitality, two drops of lemon vitality, one drop of black pepper vitality. Combine all ingredients in a small mixing bowl, set the meat in a shallow glass bowl or baking pan, pour the marinade over the meat, cover and refrigerate it for one to four hours before you grill. And then you can discard any unused marinade. So that is a great way to marinate your meat and let those amazing flavors get into that before you cook with it. Okay, so this is a new one. Uh, once again, this is a long recipe, so I couldn't fit it on here, but you will have a copy of that in the file. Spicy potato salad. So for this, you're going to combine, um, you're gonna have six medium-sized gold potatoes peeled, four tablespoons of olive oil, two garlic cloves, mint, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, two teaspoons of ground turmeric, two drops of coriander vitality, four drops of lime vitality, one drop of black pepper vitality, and one cup of dried wolfberries. The wolfberries are so amazing. One cup of fresh cilantro, chopped and packed. One cup of fresh parsley, chopped and packed. One cup of fresh dill, chopped and packed. And you're gonna use salt and pepper to taste. So to make this, you're gonna place peeled potatoes in a large pot of boiling water, cook until soft for about five or 10 minutes, sorry. Drain the potatoes, dry them and cube them. Then you can eat, heat up two tablespoons of olive oil in a cast iron skillet on medium heat. Stir in garlic, red pepper flakes, and the dried wolfberries. Cook for two to three minutes and then add the turmeric. Toss in the potatoes and mix well to coat. Add cilantro, parsley, and dill. Cook an additional four minutes. Remove from heat. Mix two tablespoons of olive oil with coriander, lime, and black pepper vitality oils. Then you can drizzle that over the potato salad until it's fully mixed. Add salt and pepper to taste if you need something else. Add, and you can top it with additional red pepper flakes and the remaining fresh herbs. You can serve this warm or at room temperature. So this is um, gonna be, might be slightly different than what you're used to, but it sounds pretty good. And just so you know, if you have not eaten the dried wolfberries, we are, that's what our Ninja Red, Ninja Red products um, are all made with is from the wolfberries. But the dried wolfberries, one way to kind of replace them in recipes is anywhere you might use like a dried cranberry, you could use um, a dried wolfberry, okay, or any other type of dried berries that you might do in a recipe. So these work really well to make in muffins, in breads. Um, a lot of people like to uh, add them to their oatmeal, you know, that kind of thing. Um, eat it in yogurt mixed with yogurt is another way people really enjoy eating the wolfberry. They're so good. Okay, so this is a, another new recipe we'll have to try out. Homemade blueberry lavender ice cream. So for this recipe, you're gonna use two cups of frozen blueberries, 
one cup of full fat coconut cream, four teaspoons of blue agave, four drops of lavender vitality, and up to a third of a cup of coconut water. So the way to make this, you can line a small casserole dish with wax or parchment paper. Then you're gonna add frozen blueberries, coconut cream, lavender vitality, and agave to a high powered blender or a food processor. You're gonna pulse the ingredients together, adding coconut water one tablespoon at a time to help the ingredients blend together smoothly. Be careful not to add too much liquid or ice cream or the ice cream will become too soft. Pour the blended ingredients into the prepared dish. You're gonna cover it and freeze it for at least four hours. Then you can scoop it into bowls, garnish it with your favorite toppings and enjoy. And I think this would probably, I just, I have um, a Pampered Chef ice cream maker that I still haven't used yet, Heather. Um, <laughs> I would, this one might be a good one to try in, in there also. So I'll have to try that out. Okay, Autumn Bliss. Autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go. Um, this quote is unknown. As much as I love summer and hate the thought of winter fast approaching, autumn is one of my favorite seasons. When the air turns cooler, you start to break out the hoodies, go on hay rides, get cozy by the fire, and whip up all the pumpkin and apple recipes that you can find. These tasty recipes will fit right in. So this first one here is cinnamon apple chips. So really easy, you only need three ingredients. You need three apples, a quarter cup of honey, and one drop of cinnamon bark vitality. So to make these, you're gonna preheat your oven to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna use the thieves fruit and veggie spray to clean your fruit. Um, with a mandolin or knife, you can thinly slice apples from top to bottom. In a small bowl, combine honey and cinnamon bark vitality. You're gonna line two cookie sheets with parchment paper and place the apple slices on top. Drizzle the honey mixture over your apple slices, and then you're gonna bake it for 90 minutes. Then you can remove from the oven and place your apple slices on a cooling rack. For best results, store apple chips in an airtight container and eat within 24 hours. Now, I have not tried this recipe for making apple chips, but I have made them before, and they taste super yummy. And I had just done them with like the powdered cinnamon on it, but this would probably taste so good with the the cinnamon bark vitality, because I just love the cinnamon bark vitality. Okay, so pumpkin spice protein bar. So don't know if you've tried out the Pure Protein Complete uh, protein powders yet, but they are so amazing, wonderful for using in smoothies, but you can also use them in other types of recipes. So here is one. This is to make protein bars. So what you need to make these is one to two teaspoons of stevia powder, four ounces of unsweetened applesauce, two drops of cinnamon bark vitality, one to two drops of ginger vitality, one drop of clove vitality, one teaspoon of aluminum free baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, four large eggs, one 15 ounce can of raw pumpkin, two cups of oat flour, and two scoops of pure protein complete vanilla spice protein powder, and then a half a cup of chopped almonds, which is optional. So the way you're gonna make these, you're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna grease a nine by 13 glass baking dish with nonstick spray or coconut oil. Then you can combine the stevia powder, unsweetened applesauce, cinnamon bark, ginger and clove vitality oils, aluminum free baking powder, baking soda, salt, vanilla extract, and egg whites in a mixing bowl and mix it well. Then you're gonna add the oat flour, the pure protein complete vanilla spice protein powder and chopped walnuts and mix that up well. Then you're gonna spread the batter into a baking dish and bake for 30 minutes. Then you can allow it to cool before cutting and then you can cut it into 30 equal squares. Sounds really yummy. I will have to try this. I don't know if we have all the ingredients but I may have to get what's missing. Sounds pretty good. Okay, and then this next one is pumpkin spice latte. So to make this, you can do two cups of half and half, 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, two thirds of a cup of pure pumpkin puree, one cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon of pure maple X syrup, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, 
and two drops each of cinnamon bark, clove, and nutmeg vitality. So then you can whisk all of these ingredients together until they're fully combined. Then you can just add the desired amount to your regular black coffee and stir it in. And then you can store this in the refrigerator to use as needed. So basically you're making a pumpkin spice creamer, okay? And then you're just gonna use that as needed to add to your coffee. Um, it actually would probably taste really good in plain hot chocolate <laughs> and yummy things like that. Okay, here's our next section is winter warmth. What good is the warmth of summer without the cold of winter to give it sweetness? And that's a quote by John Steinbeck. You can use these recipes to add a touch of sweetness and warmth to your winter season. Okay, here's our first one. This is French toast with apple cranberry sauce. So the ingredients for this are a cup of dried cranberries, a half a cup of juice like grape, apple, or orange, one cup of berry preserves, one large Granny Smith apple chopped, four drops of orange vitality divided, three drops of cinnamon bark vitality divided, three eggs, three quarter cups of milk, a half a cup of melted butter, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, one drop of nutmeg vitality, one drop of clove vitality, one drop of ginger vitality, and eight slices of bread or 12 regular slices. Lar oh, eight large slices of bread or 12 regular slices. So it depends on what kind of bread you have. So how you're gonna make this, you're gonna combine the cranberries, the juice, the preserves, and the apples in a small saucepan and bring it to a simmer over low heat. You're gonna remove it from the heat and add two drops of orange vitality and one drop of cinnamon bark vitality. Stir and then let, set that aside. You're gonna heat a griddle to 375 degrees. Combine your eggs, milk, butter, vanilla, nutmeg vitality, clove vitality, ginger vitality, plus two drops each of cinnamon bark vitality and orange vitality in a shallow dish and stir well. Then you're gonna dip your bread into the egg mixture, allow the excess to drip off before you set it on your griddle. You're gonna cook on each side about three to four minutes um, or until golden brown. Then when you're done cooking the French toast, then you're gonna use that apple mixture and uh, spoon that over the top and serve it that way. So that's gonna be your sweet topping is the, the mixture that you make in the pot. Okay, this one sounds so amazing and I really need to try this soon. Um, dark chocolate cinnamon mousse. I had just seen somebody else post a recipe about using avocados in this way. So I'm very, I was excited to find this recipe here among um, the recipes I'm sharing with you tonight so we can try out the vitality oils with it. So your ingredients are three large avocados peeled and pitted, one and a half cups of raw unsweetened cocoa powder, three quarters of a cup of maple syrup, a half a cup of raw agave, 15 ounce can of coconut cream refrigerated overnight, a half a teaspoon of vanilla powder, four drops of cinnamon bark vitality, or you can substitute eight drops of orange vitality, one pinch of finely ground pink, pink Himalayan salt. Um, I will tell you for some of these recipes, if you don't have exactly what it calls for, there are substitutions you can use, so just play around with that. You can place avocados in the food processor and puree until smooth. Add cocoa powder, maple syrup, agave syrup, vanilla powder, cinnamon bark vitality, or the orange vitality and salt. Mix until smooth. In a separate bowl, whip up the coconut cream until fluffy. Then you're gonna gently fold in the chocolate mixture to the whipped cream until it thoroughly combines. Serve immediately or refrigerate until ready to serve. So that just sounds amazing and it is so full of super healthy fat. Um, that's awesome. Okay, so homemade hot cocoa. I love making homemade hot cocoa recipes. We've often done these when I've done my DIY classes and made these as uh, big jars for gifts. So here is a nice recipe that you can use um, with what you have at home. So in this recipe, you're gonna take four cups of unsweetened almond milk, or you can substitute other milk of your choice, eight tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, four teaspoons of honey or more to taste, 
four drops of lavender, peppermint, orange, or cinnamon bark vitality. So what you're gonna do is heat the milk in a saucepan on medium high heat, and then you're gonna add in the cocoa, the vanilla extract, and the honey, and whisk until smooth. When it's warm, remove from heat and stir in the essential oils of your choice. Then you can serve it and enjoy it. Okay. And then here, these are two of my own recipes that I threw in here. These are two that we love to make. They're also ones, I always share these when I do uh, most of my DIY classes because uh, often I'll make these for everybody to sample <laughs> when we're getting together, especially when we're doing our holiday uh, DIY gift making classes. But what we have here is um, a pumpkin bread recipe. So we had taken a pumpkin bread recipe that we like to use and substituted out the seasonings. And we actually make, this actually makes uh, a huge amount. So this makes three loaves of pumpkin bread. One other thing our family likes to do is throw in chocolate chips. So some people will put like raisins in it. So you could also substitute out instead of the chocolate chips, you could also put in two cups of dried fruit if you wanted to. But this recipe, you use three cups of pumpkin, two cups of brown sugar, two cups of granulated sugar, now my recipes here do not have the um, healthy substitutes. I'm still working on how to change those out on this type particular recipe. Uh, six eggs, one and a half cups of uh, cooking oil, four and three quarters a cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoon of baking powder, three drops of clove, three drops of cinnamon bark, three drops of nutmeg, and then you can optionally add two cups of chocolate chips. We love making chocolate uh, chocolate chip pumpkin bread. It's so yummy. Then you just preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And then you're going to um, grease the three loaf pans. It does make three full-size loaf loaves. Um, dump all the ingredients into a bowl and mix it together. And then you're just going to divide the batter into the three pans and then you bake it at 350 for about 45 to 60 minutes, kind of depends on your oven um, and the type of pans that you're using. So it's a really yummy recipe. And pretty much everybody who's tried it um, likes it. One, another tip when you're using your Vitality oils is make sure before you tip it to you know, count out your drops, make sure the little plastic or the little clear orifice diffuser piece is all the way in the bottle. Sometimes they might come loose. Maybe somebody who used it before you actually popped it off and it was loose. We did have a hiccup one day when my daughter was making this and um, the clove bottle, for some reason, the little, the orifice uh, attachment was loose. And so she went to count out her three drops and about half a bottle of clove ended up in that batch of um, bread. So we tried to quickly scoop out <laughs> the part that had the clove in it. We did bake it so that we could just, you know, we didn't want to waste it, but um, it was pretty much not able to be eaten unless you like super love clove. And I like clove, but it was, it was bad. <laughs> but anyways, if you use the right amount, it tastes amazing. Okay, so what next? So, all right, who's hungry now? I don't know about you, but these recipes are making me hungry and really excited about to trying, how to, trying out using my Vitality oils in new ways. So let's grab those Vitality oils and head to the kitchen. If you haven't snagged your Young Living membership yet, let's get you hooked up, Chef. You can become a member and get 24% off retail and access to Essential Rewards, the best monthly subscription box around. Just pick out your favorite starter kit and a lifetime membership comes absolutely free. You can grab a ready-made essential oils premium starter kit valued at over $400 for only $165. It comes with a diffuser and 12 oils, five of which are from the Vitality line. Another great option is the basic starter kit for $35, and then you can add on the oils that we talked about from tonight's class, creating a custom kit. The basic kit includes your free membership, a bottle of stress away, and a few other awesome goodies to help you get started. Both of these options for this month um, only, or at least with the premium starter kit, you can actually get through the rest of May a free bottle of the Luscious Lemon Hand Soap. This is a special that they just announced for new members buying the premium starter kit. So it's an awesome deal. So make sure, I want to make sure that you get the best deal on everything. So let's continue on. 
Okay, so I've got good news for you. You can now join Essential Rewards right away. That means your starter kit can be your first Essential Rewards box, earning you points back immediately. After you say yes to Essential Rewards, you will be prompted to set up your next box. So go ahead and start swapping out those dried herbs in your kitchen. In the next few months, you can use your customizable box to replace toxic products that might be hiding in your cabinet. Get that home filled with oily goodness. Thankfully, Young Living has over 600 oils and oil-infused products to help you do just that. So let's look quickly at the Essential Rewards perks. You can earn points to spend on future products. You earn free loyalty gifts along the way. You get free promotional items available every month. Sometimes it's a free Vitality Oil. I'm going to show you what the maize ones are next. Exclusive discounted Essential Rewards bundles. Completely customizable and flexible every month. You can change up what you order. Um, you're not stuck ordering the same thing every month. There is no cancellation fee and you have access to some different shipping options. So let's see, we already talked about the bonus. So how do you order? You can simply go to youngliving.com, click on become a member and use the number of the person who told you about oils as an enroller and sponsor. It's that simple. Welcome to the world of oils. Um, you can also use the link that I have posted on this graphic so you can sign up and I will, you would be on my team and I will be there to support you all along the way. If you'd like to sign up and have access to these amazing products, just say yes in the chat or message me directly and I'll help you get set up after our class tonight. Don't forget to fill out the contact me, contact me form so that I can assist you in everything that you would like to learn and follow up with you and make sure I get that free file with all the recipes sent out to you. Also, my member number that you can use to fill in for enroller and sponsor is 1458514. Okay, so that is one of our awesome things. So here for May, every month they release new freebies that we are able to earn based on the qualifying order that we place. And you'll see on this graphic, that if you place an ER exclusive, so that means an essential rewards order, those oils are free um, <clears throat> for those, only for those who are placing an essential rewards order. They are not available for those placing just what we call a quick order or through the shop button on our website. So starting at 100 PV, if you're on essential rewards, you get a freebie at that point. And this month it's actually longevity vitality which is actually an amazing oil and very immune supportive, among other things. So it's really, really good. <coughs> um, oh yeah, Heather, that happened a little bit ago <laughs> where you can actually, your starter kit, you can choose to have your starter, your premium starter kit count as your essential rewards order. And um, then you just set up your second month order. It makes it so easy to get started and you earn $10 in essential reward points right away with your premium starter kit order, in addition to anything else you add on. So it's an amazing deal. Okay, so well, you did it, chef. You now know how to cook with essential oils. You can walk confidently into that kitchen and whip up your first oily recipe. Don't be afraid to get creative, experiment, and try new things. You've got this. Oh, and feel free to invite me over any time to be your taste tester. Once again, don't forget to fill out that contact me form so that I can send you the file with all the recipe cards from this presentation. And make sure you stay on and we will chat for a bit to answer any questions that you might have. And I'd love to hear your experiences also with um, recipes that you may have done. So let me go ahead and stop sharing this for the moment. So I can see you. <laughs> okay, so did you have any questions or have you used any of these oils yet? Um, I'd love to hear how you're using them with your cooking or even in drinks and that kind of thing. Do you have anything to share? I've mostly used them in drinks. Okay. Like lemonade and, um, well, and as, immune support in a drink, but not not in a food dish. I've just never been brave enough, which is silly. You saw earlier how many oils I have. I have bunches. Yeah. So. <laughs>
Yeah, it's it takes some experimenting. Um, you know, um, you know, some people just are not comfortable with it, but you really just have to kind of try it out. The biggest thing is just to do a little at a time. Yeah. Um, a little at a time. <laughs> and even some of these recipes, you can even start out, like I said, using half of what it says and then taste yeah. it to see if it fits. Especially for the hot ones. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, and, I talked over you, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. And like, the, the oregano is like way strong. I mean, really all of those herbal ones are like really strong also. Plus, you know, like the seeds vitality and the cinnamon bark um, and nutmeg, clove, they're all strong. <laughs> so a little bit goes a really long way. And, and so, um, and each person's tastes are different. So some people might like that super strong taste and others, um, it might be too much. Like my husband's been playing around with doing our own spaghetti sauce and using the oils or adding to um, tomato sauce just to kind of make our own quick version. And um, he doesn't use a whole lot, but to me, it's just a lot, but he loves it. <laughs> so, you know, each of our tastes are a little bit different when it comes to those things. 